Hi y'all, Karma here. Today we're going to be doing an amazing video learning all about plantain. We're going to be making two different projects. We're going to be making a plantain lotion bar as well as plantain lip balm. So I hope you'll stick around with us and learn all about plantain. No me Take the time to dig deep Underneath this red heat We could really meet Welcome, welcome y'all. Thank you so much for clicking on this video to learn about plantain with me. If you're new to the channel, we hope that you'll want to subscribe and hit that alarm bell so that you get notified of all of our videos. We're a natural healing channel that has different videos on things like herbal remedies, crystals, some earth magic videos, and upon request, I've heard back from some of my subscribers from former videos, we're going to be doing some bee videos as well as we get our new bee packages in the next month or so. If you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for hanging out with me. I appreciate y'all so much. You're my family. Your comments really help me to keep going and making these videos. So let's get right into learning about plantain. First off, you need to know, sorry about the oil circle here. I set the infused oil on it, but we're going to be using a pocket berry monthly um, to do this video. It is a monthly subscription box that runs $39.95 plus shipping coming out to $47.45 a month. The subscription information will be in the video description as well as pinned in the comments below, as well as a, co a coupon code or a discount code, I guess it is, of Karma for 10% off your box so you can make these projects with me. Now this is the number 19, which came out in January, 2023. And as you can see, in the box, there's everything you need to make at least one project, if not two. It comes with this beautiful booklet. We'll go through some of the content in it, but know that we're going through very little of what's there. You've got growing plantain and harvesting plantain. Then you've got the information on how to make the oil, the lotion bar, the lip balm. They also have a recipe for plantain chips, and then they have beautiful, beautiful pictures in the book. So as you can see, I've already done the infused oil with the castor oil and plantain. Now, I didn't videotape my making this that I, I think, unless I go back and find it, but this is the castor oil that they give us in the um, kit, and you pour that castor oil in there along with one of the bo a whole bottle of the common plantain, and the folk method and by the way, we've got extra plantain, which is why my bottle's filled up again, and there's still enough to fill it one more time. So great to have these to put in your apothecary and be able to remake these uh, recipes or other recipes as you need them. But I put this in and use the folk method. The folk method is you put this in, you put it in a dark, cool place for a month. You shake it every day or a couple of days. I like to talk to my plants and tell them, thank you so much for all the medicinal qualities that you have that you're offering to us. And it sits in there for a month. Now, if you don't have a month to wait before you do your videos, you can do a quicker infusion method where you use a crock pot, um, you can use an Instapot, you can also do it on the stove with using a jar. But you would set these in here if you were doing this method, you would leave it on a low heat for two hours. Often when I'm trying to do mine, I'll actually do it for about 12 hours to get it nice and infused. And you just want that on low on your crock pot. You don't want it to be boiling. You just want it to have a nice heat to infuse that oil. But as you can see, we already got our oil done here. So it's all ready to go and it's been sitting for a month and I've been talking to it nicely to tell it to make wonderful lotion and lip balm for me. But before we get into that, let's look a little bit about plantain. I'm going to read you some of the section from the book, and then I will also give you information that I've gotten as I've been doing my naturopath coursework. So plantain, or plantago major, 
Also known as broadleaf plantain or common plantain is a flowering herb that is a member of the Plantincia family. Unrelated to the plant that produces banana-like fruit, its genus name, Plantago, comes from the Latin for sole of the foot. That's most likely a reference to the shape of the leaf, but it's an apt name for the plant that's so common along footpaths. The more stepped on, the better. It also has a history of being carried on foot throughout Europe and North America. Roman armies were said to have spread the broadleaf plantain on their conquests, and Native Americans referred to it as white man's footprint because it was introduced by Europeans. In more recent years, its seeds were unintentionally mixed in with cereal grain and other crop seeds, aiding its dispersal around the world. And it can be used for so many things. I know working with the apiary and the bees, you can uh, just chew up the leaf and put it on any bites and stings. So it's great to be able to identify and know where you have it growing. Plantago Major has a long history of medicinal use and in recent years its economic importance has grown significantly and its medical properties have been affirmed scientifically. The leaves can be applied externally as a poultice for wounds, burns, and insects bite, just like I said. The leaves can also be eaten raw or cooked as a leaf vegetable. When taken internally, an infusion of the leaves is great to treat respiratory problems such as bronchitis and asthma. For this month, though, our projects will focus on plantain's ability to heal the skin. Applied topically, plantain has the power to stop bleeding and heal bruises, including puncture wounds, bug bites, bee, wasp, and nettle stings, boils, and ulcers. Also heard um, it used like for uh, poison ivy and that kind of thing. When treating cuts or other open wounds, it not only staunches the bleeding, it also prevents infection by removing dirt. And as an antiseptic, it disinfects the wound. A unique trait that sets plantain leaf apart from other tissue healing plants is its intense drawing ability, which is why it's so good on stings and bites. It draws out the poison from snake bites, animal bites, insect bites, bee stings, wasp stings, and nettle stings. The same drawing action makes it highly effective in splinter removal and in bringing blisters or spots to a head. We love the multi-use herb here at Apothecary Monthly and it does not get more multi-use than plantain. So we welcome you, us, welcome you with us on this journey with plantain. The science. Studies show that plantain can tevil contains several anti-inflammatory compounds that decreases inflammation. Studies have also shown improved wound healing and tissue repair. Internally, several plantain compounds, including psyllium, may promote bowel regularity and help treat diarrhea. Animal studies have shown that plantain helps promote healing of stomach ulcers. Plantain also includes complex polysaccharides and have a soothing effect they are also known as demucilants that can be helpful with bronchitis. Traditional uses. In folk medicine, plantain is espoused as a cure-all that can reduce inflammation, reduce bleeding, prevent wound infections, soothe stomach aches, relieve colds, and pretty much anything you can think of. Surprisingly, there is a great body of research to back up these claims. Plantain psyllium, you know when you buy the psyllium, is a common over-the-counter remedy for diarrhea, constipation, and hemorrhoids. The leaves are incredibly fibrous, and it's no surprise they can help stomach function. Potential risks. Plantain is generally considered safe to be used medicinally and eaten raw or cooked. Mild symptoms may occur, including nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and skin reactions to those with an allergy to the plant. Although extremely rare, very high doses can trigger anaphylaxis if you're allergic to it. <laughs> As with any herb, it's best to start slow and increase your intake once you know your body tolerance to the plant. Anyone pregnant or breastfeeding, as always, should consult their health care provider before using. So we've got our infused oil all created and we're going to start out with the lotion bar. It says lotion bars are so amazingly simple to make and are beyond useful. I freaking love them. 
I've gotten a couple from the beehive place that I go to and from farmers markets and I'm so glad to be making it myself because it's one of my favorite ways to get lotion. It's just such a nice delivery. While we will be making one this month for plantain, you can use this recipe with other herbs to create even more medicinal remedies. We chose to create the lotion bar with plantain due to its anti-inflammatory properties, which helps aid the repair of damaged tissues. Likewise, plantain helps draw out toxins, soothes and reduces inflammation, which makes it a perfect candidate to tackle skin conditions such as dermatitis, eczema, psoriasis, poison ivy, insect bites and stings, and simple burns and unopened wound care. In addition to plantain's medicinal properties, cocoa butter is also known to reduce skin irritations like eczema and psoriasis. It also softens the skin and relieves dryness and flaking. Applied topically, it, it helps to prevent wrinkles, saggy skin, mm, all my wrinkles from losing that 100 pounds, and age spots. Together, plantain and cocoa butter combine to form the perfect lotion to tackle almost anything skin. We love the natural scent of cocoa butter, but if you want to add a little more smell to your lotion, simply add 10 to 15 drops of your favorite essential oil into the mix. And I'm going to just make it plain because I love the smell of the beeswax and of the cocoa. So you're going to apply it as needed on uh, to relieve dry skin irritations. Let me go get you one of my skin bars so I can show you. So here's one that I got from the farm that I go get our raw milk on that I use to make our cheese and everything. And I absolutely love it. I love that it fits in this little tin and I actually did buy these molds right here. So instead of using this little mold that they have with the little cubes, which works just great, and I appreciate that they make sure you can make your project without buying anything. So I'm super glad they have those. But I'm gonna use this little mold. I'll probably get one, maybe one and a half um, out of what would have been made in there. But they come out like this, and it's just a beautiful lotion bar, and you just rub it on your hands, and then the heat from your hands melts the lotion and then you just finish rubbing it in. And it's really nice. Um, it's really moisturizing, and yet it's, it's you know, feels kind of oily going on, but it goes into your skin really nicely. And the beeswax, and oh, it smells so good. This one actually has cocoa butter. Co it's made with coconut oil, shea butter. So there are different things you could put in it. And then they have pine sap in there, and pine sap has a lot of great medicinal qualities too. So there's a lot of different herbs and different things that you can put into these lotion bars to make them really healing. Okay, and I didn't mention, but they do have this little scan code right here that you can scan even right now, and it will take you to their channel on YouTube, um, the Apothecary Monthly channel, and they have videos of them doing all these projects as well. So first we're gonna take an eighth cup of the plantain infused oil. I'll move this so you can see better what I'm doing. And this one did come with a nice big bag. So we're just gonna take our oil that's been infusing now for a month. Whoops, just got a little bit of herb in there. Get it out. You can, if something like that happens and you do have herb down in your oil, you can um, strain it again. I'm just going to pour this down in there. Let me get a little spoon, try and get all of that out. No, 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 no. <laughs> oh, get that out. It's going to have some little herb flex in it. It's okay. I 
was not very graceful with that, was I? I didn't make that look very easy at all. I could restrain it one more time because there are some little herbs down in there, but I don't mind having a few little herbs in there. And this has been sitting in there for quite some time. It'll take a little bit to get all that oil out of there. And like I said, I could strain it one more time if I wanted to, but there's not much herb down in there and I don't mind having a couple little herbs in there. That's an eighth of a cup. That castor oil is a kind of thick and heavy oil heavier than a lot of the other oils we use. Rub it in. Okay, so we need an eighth. So combine, uh, we're gonna put this in a can. They have it in a heat proof canning jar in an upcycled tin that they're putting down in a saucepan. But we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna use a double broiler Double broiler has water in the bottom, just a little bit though. You want to make sure it doesn't run out of water, but you don't want your pan to touch the water in the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this one on a little bit. And it's saying put the eighth cup plantain infused oil. This is a quarter cup. I'm going to do a half full. Yeah, there's plenty in there. Okay. We still got more infused oil left, probably almost double what we needed. I did add some extra oil in when I made it because I knew it was going to sit there for quite a while. And one eighth cup beeswax. And one eighth cup is two tablespoons, so I guess I could have done two tablespoons of oil. And this is all pre-measured, so this is two tablespoons or one eighth cup of beeswax. And then one eighth cup or two tablespoons of cocoa butter. And we're going to see, oh crap, I think I put too much beeswax in there. Well, I already did it. I put too much beeswax in there. I'm going to have to go downstairs and get more beeswax for the other one. So this had, the lip balm takes a teaspoon. So I, there's like a teaspoon too much in that that I put in there. And I'll have to get a teaspoon for later. Then the cocoa butter again, an eighth of a cup or two tablespoons. I'm going to measure this. Because I'm assuming there's enough in there for both recipes. I just did an oops. So there's one tablespoon. two tablespoons and there is a little bit left over. I don't know if it's quite yet. Yeah, oh, we got right. Got a teaspoon. So perfect. So they did give you enough for both. Because I have that extra uh, teaspoon of beeswax, mine's just going to be a little bit more solid, take a little bit more heat and rubbing in order to uh, melt on my skin. Um, and we're just going to do this until everything is melted. I'm just going to let that go until it gets all melted. Then it says, um, as that's melting, 
It says remove from heat, allow to slightly cool. If you want to add a few drops of essential oils, you can, we're not going to. And then you pour them into these molds that they have for you. But again, we are going to use these cute molds. And these silicone molds are so cheap and I just think they're so cute with the little bee on them. You see that? <laughs> Aren't those cute? Just like the one I bought. And I love that they fit in the two ounce tin so it's perfect for gifts to be able to um, give them for gifts. And they're just so cute. Um, it does say that this will last for nine months to a year. And they say how to use. Lotion bars are essentially a solid form of lotion made with non-greasy moisturizing ingredients. Although they're solid like a bar of soap, they soften slightly when they get warm. A few seconds of rubbing through your hands or running under warm water will melt, make the bar melt slightly for easy application. So that is all we're doing here. We're just waiting for this to melt. And as we're waiting for this to melt, I'm gonna tell you some of the other things that I learned in my naturopath course. Starting to get melted. So plantain or plantago, plantago major. Be energetics. It is a cooling, moistening, and slightly constricting herb. The properties, it's an antiseptic, an antivenomous, an astringent, a decongestant, a demucillant, or an expectorant, uh, an emollient, a vulnerary, which means that it promotes wound healing, an anti-inflammatory, an anodyne, which means that it relieves pain, an anti-diabetic, the seeds, uh, a styptic, and that means it stops bleeding, an alternative, an obstructorant, which means it removes obstructions. That's why we talked about it removing a splinter or drawing out the venom from a bug bite. It's an antimicrobial, an anti-tumor, a hepatoprotective, which means it protects the liver, and a laxative. The body systems that it works on are the kidneys, the lungs, the veins, the digestive system, and the intestinal system, and of course the skin, which is what we're using it mostly for today. There are no known warnings except for the ones that we read in the booklet. Obviously, if you are pregnant or breastfeeding, make sure that you talk to your doctor first. So it's also known as white man's footprint, a ribwort, St. Patrick's leaf, or snake weed, because it said that you can chew it up and put it on snakes' bites. The uses, the leaves externally for wounds, burns, and insects' bites. The leaves can be eaten as a vegetable. The leaf infusion for respiratory, inflammation, and bowel disorders. It stops bleeding, prevents infection, heals bruises, puncture wounds, bug bees and wasp stings, nettle stings, boils, ulcers, splinter remover, bugs, or brings blisters or spots to a head, snake bites, um, and then the psyllium that's made from it is good for diarrhea, constipation, and hemorrhoids. Now the magical properties for plantain, the gender is feminine, the planet is Venus, the element is earth. Uh, the powers are healing and strength, protection, and snake repelling. You can see how a lot of the magical properties that you read about have a lot to do with the plant's properties itself and the healing properties. Uh, historical magical uses. These were taken, just so you know, from Scott Cunningham's Encyclopedia of Magical Herbs. That's one of the two books that I love to use to find out the magical uses for herbs. So historically, the magical uses, you can bind plantain with red wool to the head to cure headaches and place beneath the feet to remove weariness. Hang in a car to guard against the intrusion of evil spirits and peace of the root in your pocket will protect you from snake bites. Again, I don't know that I subscribe to all of these, but you know, if you're out where snakes are, I guess it can't hurt to have a little plantain in your pocket right? Okay, we're still getting this. I, I kept it pretty low, so let me turn it up just a tad to get this melted. I 
while it's melting, I'm going to run down and get more beeswax for our next project. Okay. If I messed up, used all the beeswax in one project. I'm glad it was only like a teaspoon too much because that won't be too bad. I'll be so glad when we have our bees and then I won't have to buy any more beeswax. And these are just beeswax pellets, the same as what came in their box. How are we doing here? Okay, getting better. I don't like to heat it too much. I like to kind of let it, you know, just barely get down to what it needs because I feel like heat can destroy some properties even in beeswax and such. So if you just take your time and let that melt a little bit more slowly, getting closer and closer though, you can see I got just a little bit of stuff in there, but you can see now it's completely melted and ready to go in our molds. Just gonna put all that back in there. And of course with what's left. Mm. You know what? I think I might add some in there. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off. We'll go ahead and add just a little bit of lavender in these and you can let this cool down and you can add it directly to there, but I like adding it directly to my things. Yeah, 10 to 15 drops. I'm going to put 10 in each. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I don't mind it being fairly strong. Okay, so we're going to take this off here. We're just going to pour it into the molds. And looks like I'm going to get one. Full bar. There's a little bit left. I'm going to go ahead and put it in here just so, just so I can use it. Might as well use it, right? So there is our lotion bar. Like I said, because I knew I'd get probably about one good one in here, and that's going to be a beautiful bar. This is just a little bit of extra, and it looks like my herb specs kind of went in that little bit. I'll just pop it out and just use it quickly. But this is going to take a while for it to solidify and dry, so we're going to let it do that now, and then you're just going to pop it out of that mold because it's silicone, so it's easy to just pop them out of. You can put that in a two ounce tin to keep it taken care of. And again, this says that it will last nine months to a year. Now I've had lotion bars that I've had for, I usually go through them within the year. Um, so I can't say I've had them longer than a year, but I'm pretty sure as with most things, we're always going to give you an expiration date to assure that hopefully the uh, herbal qualities are fresh and potent, but um, there's really nothing that makes them go bad per se. Sometimes when you're using olive oil, you might get a little of a rancid um, smell from the olive oil that goes rancid, but there's nothing in that rancid oil that will hurt your skin or bother you if you do use it later. So our next project then is going to be the lip balm. And I'm fine that it still has the lotion stuff in. We're still making a plantain recipe. So I'm not worried about the little bit of remnants that are in there. It'll just give us a little more lip balm. Okay, these don't want to come off my fingers, of course. My skin get lots of love while I'm making these products, huh? So with our lip balm, we're going to do one tablespoon of plantain infused oil. And again, this does have some of the little herbs in it, but I'm okay with that. And 
and most of the herbs are kind of staying behind anyway. Okay, so there's our tablespoon of infused oil. teaspoon of beeswax and that's what I use so I have to get a teaspoon of beeswax. There we go. Teaspoon of beeswax, the rest of the cocoa butter which is going to be a teaspoon of cocoa butter. We're just going to let this again melt. Probably should turn on my heat a little bit. Pan's hot enough, it's almost melting without the heat being turned on. Let that continue heating, just like the other videos I showed you, where it, just until it melts that. Um, remove from the heat if adding essential oils. You can let it cool for about a minute. Remember, you can also put the oils right in the container itself and it will disperse the oil as you pour in the hot liquid. So that's what I'm going to do. What oil should I use? I don't know, let me go look. Now I'm gonna use uh, orange essential oil. Um, the only thing that I could see that might be contraindicated is citrus is photosen photosensitive. So um, you'll wanna watch and put some sunscreen on or just make sure that you're not in the, out in the hot sun with too much citrus. But these drops shouldn't cause a problem. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put again about 10 drops. Eight, nine, 10. Okay. Essential oil in there. And we're almost melted here. There we go, all melted. So I can turn this off. Let's see if I can move that forward a little bit. There we go. Now it's gonna fill it right to the very tippy top with just a little bit left over. spilled it over. <laughs> There's just a little bit left in the pan. So we're letting this dry. You can see how that's cooling off and it's going to make a beautiful bar of lotion. That's going to do the same and cool off and then we'll have a nice little lip balm that we can use. What did you think of plantain? Tell me one thing you learned that you didn't know about plantain before you started watching this video. Thanks for hanging out with me. Don't forget to hit that subscribe and that bell if you haven't already and if you're one of my returning viewers, leave me a comment below and let me know how life's going and how you're doing. So thanks so much for hanging out with me and learning about one of my favorite herbs, plantain. Yarrow, plantain, those are two of my very favorite all-purpose herbs. Um, if I had to put in a first aid kit or make sure I had a round for first aid, yarrow and plantain with their bleeding stop abilities and their healing abilities, are two of my go-tos, that's for sure. So thanks for hanging out and learning about plantain with me and making these two amazing projects. Have a great day and remember, come back often to the channel where you can say, Karma's my friend. Bye y'all. <laughs>